let's talk about the 1965 Olympia. Well, I mean, the 1960s, well, the Olympia came into um, creation because, uh, you know, Joe Weider figured that, you know, we had the universe, we had the Mr. World, we had uh, Mr. America, but he wanted an overall title that, that somebody that won those titles could go on to. Larry Scott had reached the end of his career. He'd got nothing more to aim for. And uh, they had a, a, a dinner meeting and Betty Weider was there. This was in 64, I believe and talked about a new contest, you know, an overall contest for the champion of champions. And they were looking for a name and uh, they were drinking Olympia beer. And this is a true story. I know it sounds fantasy, but it's true. <laughs> and Larry was of the opinion that, well, Olympia beer, is that is that really great PR for a bodybuilding contest? Maybe it should be called, and he said this, Mr. Broccoli, you know, that's healthier. But anyway, <laughs> that was how the Mr. Olympia came into, into being, you know, to, to create this overall, you know, champion of champions mantle. And that, that it was launched in 1965, September, at the Brooklyn Academy of Music. Was there any other, any other considerations for the name? I mean, obviously it was named after the Olympia beer, and it was in that famous scene in the, in the bigger movie, um, was, it, was, was there any other name considered other than the Olympia? I, I, I don't know. It doesn't appear so because, it, it, you know, even Larry's recounted the story and apart from sort of saying we should maybe call it Mr. Broccoli, which obviously it was, it was being, uh, you know, humorous. Um, there didn't seem to be another name coming on. But if you think about it, you know, it, the Olympia, it, it does fit the bill, doesn't it? Mount mm. Olympia, um, you know, champion of champions, uh, something really big and special and over and above the universe yeah so what was it how many competitors were in there do, do you remember john three only three competitors three the, competitors there was uh, yeah. yeah 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 there, there was there was um larry harold paul and earl maynard right um, earl maynard yeah. was a was a friend of my father's when he was in the raf based in cyprus no kidding. Wow. Yeah, he, he always yeah, said my he always had said my dad had um, really good genetics for bodybuilding, and my dad said he was never interested. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Well, that, that night, that first night, they did hold the Mr. America and Mr. Universe contest right. before the Olympia, and Earl Maynard won the Universe and went forward to the Olympia. Hmm, he right. finished third. Harold Paul was second. Harold was only eighteen, and some people thought maybe he should have won. He was amazing. Yeah, you know, Harold Paul. Yeah often forgotten about, you know, but a tremendous, tremendous physique. Yeah, that's not talked about a lot, but Harold Poole was unbelievable at a young age as a teenager. And uh, I know that the next year in 1966, a lot of people thought he should have beat Larry Scott. So he had an amazing yeah. physique for a teenager. It was unbelievable. Yeah. So he was 18, I mean, 19 19 years old. He was uh, he was 21, actually. 21. Um, okay. in, the, in that first, first Olympia, yeah. Mm. Just turned 21. And obviously this was uh, 12 years before the Sandow actually came into, into being. What, what did uh, Larry win for winning the Mr. Olympia? <laughs> well, all he won was a crown that year. There, there, was, there, was no, uh, there was no prize money. He did get 1,000 the next year, but no crown. So he probably appreciated the $1,000 more than the crown. Yeah. The Imperial Margin Crown. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a do you have... Um, Sorry, go on. I mean, from the people I've spoken to that were there, people like Lou Ferrigno, Mike Mensah was there. He was only about 15 or 16, but wow. came all the way to New York to see it. The mm. thing they talk about is it was almost like Beatlemania when Larry Scott came out. You know, the crowd was chanting, we want Larry, we want Larry. And when he came out, Joe Weider was so excited. He sort of preempted Larry coming out. He said, "Doesn't he look fantastic?" <laughs> you know, and nobody, nobody had seen him yet. You know, mm. and um, Mike Mensah, I mean, showing how intrepid he was. Um, when it was all over, he he climbed over the barriers, went backstage, saw Dave Draper, Mike Mensah, walked outside with them, and and there was like this massive crowd just waiting for them, and it was something like one o'clock in the morning you know it really was shades of beatlemania 